Yo. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I should have warned you. <laughs> I... Son? Okay, there we go. Yeah, I can hear you. <clears throat> can you hear me? Yes. Okay. No, I am trying to... I should really mark my... Uh, I have a uh, lightning cable, a, uh, a iPhone cable, and I have about ten different things plugged into the back of my PC, so every time I want to plug <laughs> in my phone, it's like, uh-oh. <coughs> it reminds you of those old puzzles in the... Uh, you know, when the, uh, you so, know when you're, yeah, you have to trace the cable oh. back to where it go. Yeah. I think that was just preparing us for life, actually. I I am so infuriated with my iPhone. I plugged <laughs> it into my computer the other day, which was a colossal mistake. Because iTunes? And then, yeah, it's like, you have to update your iPhone, otherwise you can't use it anymore. <laughs> it, it locked out my phone until I updated the firmware. Oh. Fine, fuck you, Apple, I'll update. Which okay, is... well, first you have to update iTunes. Oh. I am going to murder yeah. all of you. <laughs> Dig up Steve Jobs and say, what have you done? <laughs> Re- Did, you ever Come see back. Show- Did you ever see the show Becker? No. We had the guy from Cheers in it as a doctor. And there's a line in there that I really love where he's talking to his secretary and says, Linda... So help me God, if you don't do this properly, I'm going to kill you and then use my powers as a doctor to bring you back to life and then kill you again. <laughs> That's funny. Just always like that line, like, powers as a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Speaking of powers as a doctor, I saw the new episode of Sherlock. It's pretty good. I need to start watching that. You do! Um, <laughs> the pilot... Like, the very first episode of the series is really good. There's a um, part of the show where he's at gunpoint, and he gets out of it in a really <laughs> awesome way. I can't say any more than that. So, it's it, it makes those Robert Downey Jr. movies just look inferior. They they looked kind of inferior when I saw them in the first place, but... Yeah. Well, they, you know, I, I have this opinion that they need to take all of the awesome music and cinematography and fight choreography on, and all those things from that movie and put it into something that's not a weak mystery movie. Yeah. If they'd done that for an action film... Yeah. Like, if they just had a straight-up action film, that would have been fine. It would have been incredible. Yeah. But it's not... The mystery part of those movies is not great, which is the whole reason why they... It's Sherlock Holmes... <sighs> Although I will say the second one was far better than the first. I'll give it that. You know what I'd kind of like to see? Since Sherlock Holmes, Sherlock Holmes and Arthur Conan Doyle were actually the source of one of the first copyright disputes in world history. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, did you know this? Uh, I do now, I guess. <laughs> there, was, there was a French author who was writing a series of stories about a man named Arnaise Lupin, who was a master thief. Mm. And at one point, he thought, you know what would be funny? What if Lupin and Sherlock happened to get into a contest of wills and wits with each other? Mm. Without... Without Arthur to... Conan Doyle's permission, mm. yeah. But... Since now, both of those characters are in public domain. Yeah. Like, anyone can make a Sherlock Holmes movie. Do you think anyone's going to grab that story? I'd love for somebody Bring it, to grab that story. Make a sequel, and you know, because it's now public domain, so fuck it. That would be... Yes, I would love to see that. <laughs> You'll have Steve Martin in, in there somewhere. Yes. French Steve but Martin. But it's like... Or, the original story was basically Sherlock Holmes fan fiction. Mmm... The and first case of fan fiction. Oh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and I, I can all, like, the movie, a movie based on fan fiction. I want yeah. to see that. <laughs> <laughs> and and then, old, uh, like I said, the first case of fan fiction, yes, too. The so. original fan fiction. <laughs> I say, what if there were these ponies that would talk to each other? Oh, God. <laughs> Why am I turning into Christopher Walken? <laughs> British Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. I need to get some water and then we can start. That's fine. Thing. 
Hello everyone, you are listening to the Video Gabe Cast, Episode 6. Joining me this week, once again, is Argus. You are listening to me with your ears. Oh, what? Is that how it works? And possibly your eyes, if you live in backwards land. <sighs> I haven't drank enough to tolerate your your nonsense, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been listening to a lot of Welcome to Night Vale lately. It has this effect on people. I thought we were about to go into another Neil Stevenson conversation again <laughs> by the words that were coming. You do that, too. <laughs> That's a dangerous road to go down. Um, so this is episode six, I believe. And if I'm wrong, you'll see the correction in the title of this podcast. I don't care. Um, uh, this week we will be talking about multiplayer games, but before we do that, there's a few announcements that I'm very excited about. Both, uh, <clears throat> so there will be... Killing Floor 2 will happen eventually. Really? Yes. I I like Killing Floor. I I love the idea of it. I think I've mentioned before on here that I absolutely love horde mode games. Yeah. And a, a more polished version of Killing Floor with more stuff? Just, fuck yeah, sign me up. Yeah, and, and now if you told me this three years ago, I would have said, no, there's so much material... You know, we don't need another one, but I'm to the point where it's like, I like Killing Floor, but I I think I'm ready for something new. And if they <clears throat> position themselves to say, hey, we have new Killing Floor coming, but for those of you that have limited PCs, this old product is still here with all this content. I, I don't see how they could lose. You know, I've seen custom maps for Killing Floor that are like mission maps. Have you seen any of those? Uh, you know, I. Th- are you talking about that new stuff that they added about six months ago? Because I didn't really no, do no, any No, no, they, the they've been around for a while. They're they're not they're player made maps mm. that have objectives in them. Like you have to find a thing and then take it to a place on the map. And yeah, I avoid all that. Waves waves will like continue spawning until you take care of it, which gives it more of a Left for Dead feel. Mm-hmm. And. I always thought that that was, you know, that was a cool idea, something to have in there, because the maps are smaller. So, you know, you're completing objectives in a limited space while zombies show up, mm-hmm. or specimens or whatever. But there wasn't a UI for it, so it never really pointed out, like, this is where you need to go. It just said, take this thing to the bridge. Yeah. There are 18 bridges on this map. <laughs> yep. So I hope that's one of the things that gets supported in the new one. Um, I don't have uh, any sort of aggressive uh, anti-mission mode thing, but in Killing 4, I'm just like, it's just murder dudes. Yeah. I don't want to cooperate with the other fucking teammates, because half <laughs> of them will just not know what they're doing and continue to kill enemies. Um, I think I did a mission mode once, and it was kind of a disaster, <laughs> so I said, nope, not doing that again. So yeah, the the mix of bad UI and the voice chat in that game isn't perfect. Mm-hmm. Makes missions really hard. And they aren't very well designed. I guess what I'd like to see is I'd like to see missions that synergize with the horde mode thing as opposed to being like missions that try to copy Left 4 Dead. Yeah. And, le- I mean, nothing against Left 4 Dead. I mean, it's a fun game, but it's not high art. So if you're trying to copy Left 4 Dead, you can do better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, But yeah, Killing Floor 2, I'm excited to see Mm -hmm. what... It it was very basic what they said, just, hey, Killing Floor 2 is going to happen. We don't know when, we don't know what are the details, so... (laughs) There aren't much to... It's not... Trust us, it's probably a thing. Yeah, no, I think it's it's official, but they didn't really say what they're going to do, but if it looks like... If the graphics are anything like their newer games, it's going to look... Great. Um, Who made Killing Floor? That was... Pa- uh, fuck. That wasn't Pandemic, was it? No, it was... Pandemic made... Paradox or something? Paradox. Shit? Yeah. Paradox Interactive. And then they make a bunch of other World War II games that I kind of say, why are you still making World War II games? Uh, <laughs> so, although that... What's that one game? Their like, most popular World War II game that has multiplayer. Um, I don't... World War II... I own it. <laughs> I own it, and actually, I played the multiplayer a bit, and it seems fine. It's just 
I don't know enough people that are playing it, so I just end up playing something else. But, it, you know, the graphics look great, and it's a high-quality game. It's just... It's just... Yeah. Don't know anybody to play with. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of the way world... That's not kind of the way shooters are going... Multiplayer shooters are going for me, you know, and, and they really... You don't want to play with just random people, and... Yeah. They're just... <laughs> I did that with Halo. I mean, I did that with a handful of games, Call of Duty, Halo, stuff like that, but... Yeah, it's just... I feel that way about Payday 2. Mm-hmm. Like, I mm-hmm. saw Payday 2, I see all this great stuff about it, like, yeah, it's so much fun, there's... And it looks... It looks like a bank robbery game. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Keep the game. But I don't have three friends that want to buy it, so... Yeah. And, and it's not exactly cheap enough to where you can buy it for everybody. If it goes on sale for three bucks... Yeah. yeah, I'll buy it. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to spend thirty dollars on a game that I might not like. I had to uh, buy Killing Floor for my brothers because they wouldn't do it. <laughs> and, then they, and then they, I bought. They don't. They're really stubborn because, like, it's almost like they're too stubborn to ever admit I'm right. Uh, so they, they, yeah. You know, so I finally bought it for them, and that, and then they loved it. So okay, big, big shock there. Um, but anyway, uh, other game announcements. Uh, the Last of Us is going to have DLC, a single player DLC with uh, I believe it's Ellie and um, some other girl. So I'm not exactly a journalist here. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed no, to be before that, the events. Of... That doesn't surprise me, but I always feel like when games do DLC, they shouldn't have any of the established characters from the main story. I, I actually bought one of the first pieces of DLC that was DLC, the, the Mass Effect bonus mission, mm-hmm. uh, Falling Sky, or whatever it was called. And I was disappointed, because it's just more Mass Effect. There's nothing, there's nothing like, interesting in there. And I don't, I didn't want more of the same story. Yeah. I finished the story. I wanted something else. And I feel like The Last of Us had an opportunity here, because you meet a lot of people in The Last of Us many of whom you don't kill. And I think it would have been cool to say, okay, we're having DLC, and it's going to be focused on this one guy who's, you know, and you're trying... The guy you meet who's trying to start a new community, who I don't think you murder. (laughs) The only guy that you didn't kill. You're that guy, and the whole thing, same engine... Same mechanics and everything, same world, you're just more focused on solving personal disputes and keeping the spore zombies out of your new town. Well, I think this is uh, all going to be pre, uh, before the events that happen in the game. So it's it's Ellie, but it's it's still somewhat separated from what's, what has happened. So it may have been, it may even be like before everything really went to shit. Before zombies. Maybe. So, I, you know, <clears throat> I, at first I was kind of skeptical, but I do trust Naughty Dog. Um, they're great. So anyway. I trust them more than most publishers, but remember, they aren't... They are owned by Sony, aren't they? I think so. <clears throat> yeah. So, and Hopefully Sony wasn't pressuring them, is that your concern? Yeah, like, if Sony tells them, make DLC, and mm. I, I imagine... Because this happened before with uh, Uncharted, and their response was, no. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, so Sony's saying, like, alright, seriously, guys, you have to make DLC for The Last of Us, it's in your contract or whatever, and it's like, fine. Yeah. I imagine they'll do the best they can, but I... I don't think it's necessary for... Multiplayer DLC is cool, because that can add on a lot of new stuff. Yeah. I have yet to touch the multiplayer in The Last of Us. Is there is there even multiplayer in there? There is multiplayer, and it's pretty fucking cool. People say it's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's a really awesome concept for extended multiplayer bouts, and... I I really dig it, because it's, it's a lot of short and brutal rounds of combat... Mm-hmm. Are they limiting you on, on resources like they do in the single player? They don't just limit you on resources. Collecting resources is how you keep your tribe alive and oh, get okay. respawns. And if you run out, you're just out. You're done. That sounds great, but I don't know. Because I'm so... 
disconnected from anything multiplayer nowadays. I don't know if I'm ready for that kind of commitment. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have so many... I mean, I, I want to do the Mass Effect trilogy, so it's like I have stuff like that I'm looking at, and then starting a... playing the Last of Us multiplayer kind of seems secondary to something like that. It's the kind of thing that I had fun just sitting down, playing a round or two, and then leaving. Yeah. It, like I never really sunk a lot of time into it. So it might be that it gets old after a while. I don't know. Well, I've heard it was good. I mean, so you're not the first one to say that. All right, good. I'm, I'm correct then. <laughs> um, but that's going to happen. Uh, let's keep, uh, I'll keep moving things forward. Um, what else you got on the news? Resident Evil 4 for PC! Oh, yeah. Um, they did that once before. I told my brother about this. He's like, ah, well, it's not the first time they did it for PC. I'm like, yeah, but it didn't count because it was broken. <laughs> no one wanted it. It came out and people bought it and said, fuck! And threw it away. Uh, so, but, so this is supposed to be a proper re-release and also maybe less than a year after I bought it for PS3. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny. It, this game <clears throat> and Doom, maybe even all the Doom games, they're, they're kind of neck and neck for games that I buy for fucking every... I, 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 platform my ever. fucking toaster probably can play, you know, Resident <laughs> Evil 4 and Doom at this point. Um, with how many appliances. I have it. Okay. Doom, I have for. I had that game. I had Doom 2 for Game Boy Advance. Okay, I had. What? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't great, but. Wait, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I had it for the N64. Yeah. And I didn't, oh. I didn't even own those consoles, so. But I already. Have it for like ten different things. <laughs> had it for my phone. Had it for PC. Had it for I Xbox. played you on the N64, PC, mm-hmm. and the washing machine. <laughs> yeah, the they got like a little DOS speaker in the back of the fucking <laughs> machine. <laughs> Those old sounds. Um, yeah. So Resident Evil Four, I had for um, Xbox 360. No, did I have it for maybe just PS3? Maybe both, man. I don't fucking know. PS2, GameCube. I think every thing you could get Resident Evil 4 for, I had that game. The on. Wii version was actually really yes. good. Yes! I beat it on the Wii, and it was amazing. That's, that's a great example of using the Wii controls properly. Yeah, all, all five of those games that did that. <laughs> <laughs> really? Five? Name the other four. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> um... So I will probably be buying that just so I can talk about it. It's only twenty bucks, so yeah. Uh, that was like roommate of mine has been playing uh, Resident Evil Mercenaries or something on the Game Boy DS. Game Boy DS or three yeah. DS. I, I don't <laughs> fucking know what those. I don't have one, so an old man. Uh, I don't know anything. <laughs> but I'm looking over his shoulder, and I'm kind of liking it because I I played Mercenaries with him on Resident Evil Five. And I absolutely hate it. Yeah. I just play it because it's mo- something multiplayer we can play together. Uh, in the mer- in the DS version, you can move while aiming. Oh yeah. And you can dodge while moving. It, or you actually have a dodge move. Wow. And it it basically just looks like they took all the good ideas from Shadows of the Damned and mm. put them into. I forgot Resident about Evil. Shadows of the Damned. Should I play that? Yes. Oh, mm. fucking hell, Cause I, yes. Because it was, like, a lot of the same developers I really like. Yeah. Uh, it plays a lot like Resident Evil if you could aim while moving and roll, dodge roll. Mm. Also, how can you say no to a game where the main character's name is Garcia fucking Hotspur? Oh, I remember this game now. I remember them talking about it on uh, the Bombcast. Is this on PC or is it just a console game? I don't know. I played it on the 360. Mm. My younger sister, of all people, brought it over one day. Just showed up. She, she's like really? six years older than me, and she shows up in my apartment. I was like, Mom won't let me play this. Can I use your Xbox? <laughs> How old is she? Um, This was like three years ago, so she would have been 16. Okay. And... <laughs> Well, why won't mom let you play it? Like, oh, you're 
Mm-hmm. Your sidekick is a floating skull named Johnson who turns into a gun called the Boner. Yeah, yeah. I see why Mom had a problem with this. <laughs> Did it ever make you uncomfortable sitting next to her while she's playing this game? No, it was hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Should hook me up with your sister. No. <laughs> It's kind of the reaction I wanted, but didn't want at the same time. Um, so I will be playing more Resident Evil 4, even though I didn't beat it on the PS3. So it's, it's almost like if this game comes out for anything I own, it's almost like, well, here's my money. I don't have a choice. You know, might as well have a gun to my head. Well, at least now I know how to make an extra 20 bucks. I just have to port <laughs> Resident Evil 4 or something. I, have, I got this for my fucking calculator. Here you go. Okay, here's 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> trying to move around using the buttons on the calculator. The, the text adventure version of Resident <laughs> Evil 4. <laughs> okay. You shot four times. The head exploded this time. Yay. You are out of ammo. <laughs> Gotta see that a lot. Um, yeah, Resident Evil, Resident Evil 4 is the only Resident Evil game I really got into. Even 5 didn't really do it much for me, even though I beat it. Honestly, I played 5... Uh, again, played it with my roommate. We beat it. The only thing I remember from that is the three-minute quick-time event sequence where Chris Redfield punches a boulder. Oh, right! Oh, Chris angry! Chris dream. smash rock! <laughs> my father was killed by a boulder! Die, you fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Who needs common sense? Push that rock into the lava. <laughs> it's Japan! It's not needed. No, no, that's not an that's not an acceptable <laughs> excuse anymore. <laughs> um, and then Resident Evil. Japan has made plenty of things that operate on standard logic, <laughs> but nobody wants them. <laughs> you want to see Chris getting into a boxing match with, with a giant rock. chunk of obsidian? <laughs> that game, um. Those boss fights kind of ruined that game for me. Yes, they did. They were fucking horrible. What was it? We, we were talking about this. Uh, the first boss is... It, it's like a, a... The first one is a human-based life form. The Ouroboros thing. The second boss is a fish-based life form. Because it just sucks up all the fish out the bottom of the sea and turns them into a big monster thing. The third boss is a corpse-based life form. And that's about where my suspension of disbelief just cut out. I I honestly have... The only boss I remember was... Um, what's his name? The dude with the sunglasses? Wesker? Wesker. Yeah. He was horrible. God. That boss fight was a... And I ran out of ammo, I think, at some point. Which, which one? The one where you're supposed to, like... I think it was the boulder one. I think... Fire the, rocket launchers at him? Yeah, I... Th- Think I don't. I just remember it being a pain in the ass. Not like, you know, just this boss is challenging, but just this boss was poorly designed, and now I'm going to be frustrated at it. Well, yeah, because any boss where you have to run around, break line of sight, and yeah. you know, the boss is faster than you, yeah. and the camera controls are slow and clunky. Yeah. Like you made the wrong boss for these controls. Yeah. And at least Resident Evil 4, while well, the the controls are still pretty dated, the game's kind of built around that, so I didn't yeah. really mind. God, Resident Evil 4 is so good. <laughs> it makes you just want to hang up and play it right now. Well, you can't. <laughs> you have to go to the next news story. I know, I do. Um, so that, that's it for game announcements, but Candy Crush apparently uh, making it so no other games can use the word candy. Uh, in their title, so now they're patrolling the uh, iTunes or the um, the iOS marketplace and saying, "Hey, you need to stop." <laughs> you know what's interesting? I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Yeah, probably. I I know quite a bit about copyright law for reasons, and you cannot copyright words. Yeah, you cannot trademark single words. You can trademark a name. They can trademark Candy Crush Saga. And say you cannot call your game Candy Crush Saga. Is that what it's called? I think so. Okay. I think so. Yeah. They, they they can totally do that because that's a that's a unique name. That's their game. Yeah. You can't just copyright the word candy, but even in relation to something else. Like, what if we could do that for anything? Well, I'm going to go out. Use the word the. I'm going to copyright the word 
house in relation to books. <laughs> no book can have the word house in its title or text. No, that's fucking yeah. stupid. Well, didn't Beyonce or some one of those pop music singers copyright Bootylicious or something like that? Yeah, because Bootylicious wasn't a word. Yeah, that's true. It's something they said. That's like, if I were to copyright the word sportacular. <laughs> And it, it's I, I can define it right now. It refers to anybody that abuses the copyright process. They are a sportacular individual. <laughs> uh, I now I up. can copyright that word because I made it up. Yeah. And until Webster's picks it up, I can have the copyright on it. Even then, I get to keep the copyright for I think it's currently ninety years after my death. <laughs> wow. So somebody's paying royalties to my estate every time they say the word sportacular. And of course that is a very sportacular thing of me to do. I'd probably just give it away for free. I think I'll just do get online right now and take that word from you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, the most the most valuable trait in humanity can have is greed. Not a, not a great mind or creative endeavor. It is timing. Yeah, right. Um, Giant Bomb, they'll, they will commonly come up with a website name and then, like, look online five minutes later and it's like, oh, someone, someone's heard this. <laughs> <laughs> grabbed it up. Um, so, yeah, that's happening. Uh, kind of who cares because... I like, what are they going to do? Are they actually get? Are they going to take somebody to court over that? We're I'm, suing you because your game is called the uh, Candyland. I think... N- Wait, I, hey, hang on. Does that mean what about Candyland? <laughs> what the fuck is Candyland. I think it's just in relation to iOS stuff or like phone games. And and to be honest, I'm a little confused. <laughs> I don't know. And I my guess would be that somebody would have to say that this game also looks just like Candy Crush Saga. That's what that's what the logic would say. Is but, the Candy Crush Saga? Who's that produced by? Is that made by Zynga? I don't fucking know. Phone games, who cares? <laughs> well, Zynga has this really bad habit of copying other people's yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. Especially that one Swedish developer, which the Swedish developer, whose name I can't remember, actually made a game called Stealing Swedish Developers Games <laughs> for the iOS. What? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> like they made a game about Zynga stealing their games, and then basically invited Zynga to steal it. Wow, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I isn't Zynga kind of like going downhill now that you know that, that bubble kind of burst? I don't think they're going downhill. I think they're just stalled. Um, well, because what happened is is that they kind of depended a lot on ads. Yeah. And so many people are using phones where the you don't ads see just, those. Yeah, they don't yeah. exist. Yeah. So, eh, I don't know. Phone games. I'm not very excited about phone games. There's a few I really like, but I have a I have a trivia game I play on my phone, which is kind of cool because it it suits the model very well. Is this it's, like movie trivia or it's, science? It's called, it's called Quiz Up. It's all sorts of trivia. You pick a category, it matches you with someone somewhere in the world, and you get a six second or a a uh, six-question trivia quiz with ten seconds per question. It's like literally just a two-minute burst of trivia, and whoever gets the most points wins. Is it hard? Is it like really obscure? Uh, it depends on what category you pick. Uh, I made the mistake once of saying, oh, economics, I'm a smart guy, I can make it out of this. No, <laughs> do not, no. Those, tri- um, those trivia games make me feel stupid. Just like uh, uh, that, that word game with the tiles. Scrabble? Yes. <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I forgot. But there is, uh, there's gaming categories. There's okay. TV categories. I, I, I get most of my fun out of the mythology and folklore category. I'm trying to think of which one of those I would actually be able to do anything with. Gaming, yeah, maybe. As long as they're not asking about Japanese games. I had... Um, Oh my god, I had the best... Okay, have you ever played Final Fantasy X? I... No, I, I know what it is, but I haven't really played okay. it. I, I got I got a question that popped up. Is What is the fictional sport from Final Fantasy X? Oh, I know that. That's, uh... Fuck. Yeah? It's like some soccer thing. 
It, it's called Blitzball. Ah, damn it. But the it's a multiple choice thing. It gives you four choices. One of them was Blitzball. Two other ones were other fictional sports with Blitz in the name somewhere. And the fourth one was Hockey. <laughs> That's a fictional sport. And the other person picked Hockey. What? And, and I don't... I cannot fathom... <laughs> They're not Canadian. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think oh, that's all for the news stories this week. I, I had a piece of news I wanted to mention. Okay. Have you heard about Titan Ball? I know of it. Is that <coughs> is that the... um? Who developed that again? I'm getting it mixed up. God, I don't remember. Um, it's either, there's one by Bungie, and then there's another by... Uh, I, think I think Destiny is coming from Bungie. Titanfall okay. is from... It's, Respawn Entertainment. So, oh, they were the group of people that branched off of Infinity War after they got... Yes. Yeah. And... They're, that's they the mech thing, mech. right? Yeah, it's yeah. it's a multiplayer, multiplayer-only shooter where you start it as a soldier, and you're going around, and you're gunning guys down, and you get enough points, and you can call in a mech drop, and then get into the mech, and then fight other people in mechs, and holy shit, that's cool. Yeah, people yeah. are saying it looks really good. Um, so they announced two things recently. I think I heard about this. Go on. One, the multiplayer is going to cap at six people per team. Okay. okay. And everybody got pissed off about this. Yeah, I, I was wondering why everyone was so angry. Because they're noobs? Or? I, I think because everybody wanted to see these really massive, wide-ranging battles. I think... <sighs> Look but, at the type of people that play Call of Duty and then ask yourself how many other games do they play? Yeah. Until all they know is Call of Duty. Massive, wide ranging battle games. Yeah. And I actually like the way they're setting up this model. They're making this, it's a first person shooter with underlying mechanics that play like a MOBA game. Mm hmm. Um, the players and, and your soldier that you're controlling has a jetpack and can run on walls. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. Call Shinobi uh, and say, "What now?" The, but also, your side will spawn in at drop points. NPC controlled mook soldiers that are do less damage and are dumber, but they'll move in a pack and they'll they'll like hunt down other soldier or other uh, players and mechs. And killing them, killing your opponent's goons, is what gets you points that you can stack up to buy a mech. And players themselves are a little bit tougher and obviously have the jetpacks and wall running ability and the mechs. So you you want to like chain together NPC kills so then you can pick off a player or two and then get your mech and then get out there and, and get really into it. And that kind of build up, I I dig that. Hmm. The other thing is that since this is multiplayer only, a lot of people were worried they were going to be charging like a monthly fee or something. Um, but they they announced today that no, no monthly fees. Of In course fact, not. No microtransactions at all. Cool. If That's anything good. anything you want, you can earn in the game. You you paid for the game, you get the game. That's how the system works. Yeah, microtransactions transactions can get real shitty because the, you know it becomes a pay to win model sometimes. Yeah, I appreciate it when it's done well. Yeah, I don't mind the microtransactions as long as they're out of the way. Like for example, uh, Path of Exile was like a Diablo, uh, a yeah. free Diablo game. I where love that game. A game was great. I kind of got sick of it, but yes, <laughs> um, it's it's fucking awesome, and a lot it took of people longer to get sick of than Diablo. How about yeah, that? Yeah, I was kind of just about to say a lot of people preferred it to Diablo. I didn't even get Diablo three because when it was first announced, it was like awesome, yes, and then a thousand years later, when the game came out, we all said we're sick of dungeon crawlers. Go away. Yeah, we have a thousand free versions of this. Yeah, well, I think it has some awesome ideas in it though, like well, the flasks. Trying to remember. Uh, instead of like stacking up thousands of healing potions, you just get. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, how it refills. It is a healing potion that refills as you kill. And it's pretty generous too. Like yeah, maybe it's just the way I play, but and it, I, it keeps the game moving forward. Mm -hmm. It fills up when you kill things, 
so you kill things and then use it to heal yourself from the fights you get in. It's it's a nice little cycle they got going. Yeah. Um, every time uh, someone talks to me about this game, I kind of want to go and play it. I know. But then, like... I just, but I don't want to play it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> we need a modern dungeon crawler. We need the... <gasps> How awesome would it be if Rogue Legacy 2 was like you had the uh, the, the like Torchlight guys or um, Path of Exile guys come together and still kept Rogue Legacy 2D and everything, but shoehorned in all the awesome stuff that makes those uh, dungeon crawlers great, like more loot and a big skill tree and. I can see that. I kind of want. I want a dungeon crawler that's just set in a, like, dystopia future. Where everything's bright, and not gray, and dark, and yeah. dead. Actually, I guess what I'm really asking for is, I want I want a Shadowrun game. <laughs> what, Shadowrun? that Xbox 360 game didn't do it for you? No, it did not, and <laughs> the game can die in a fire. I, that game Shadowrun had some cool Unlimited, ideas. Which just came out, was really cool, but it's not what I was looking for. Yeah. It had a great campaign, but I wanted a game where I could link up with some friends online, plan out a bank heist, and then execute that bank heist using miniguns and invisibility spells. Yeah. Like, that's what I wanted. <laughs> that sounds cool. Shadowrun meets... If I don't meets, bank vault out of there, I'm not playing Shadowrun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, do we have anything else to say about... uh? Uh, the game that we were just talking about that I've immediately forgotten. Microtransaction? Titanfall, that's yeah. what it was. It, was. it wasn't called Microtransactions, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Microtransactions of the game! <laughs> That'll be an iPhone I would, game soon I would, enough. I would try that out just because they're being honest about yeah. it. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, that, I, I don't plan on getting a new console, but I think that game may... Do you think that game will end up, ever end up on PC? Titanfall? Titanfall? I think they were saying it might... Isn't that getting a PC release? I think. You know what? Let's find out. Good. Because I was afraid of looking and ending up on a YouTube rabbit trail. Titanfall will be on the X-Bone, the 360, and the PC. Okay. Well, then maybe I might play it. <laughs> yeah. Because I have too many PC games to care about buying a console. We used to have a 360 in this apartment, and then the person who owned it moved out and took it with them, and took all my saved games, and uh, I'm... that was a thing that happened. <laughs> I bet you part of you died with that console. It's amazing how demoralizing it can be to lose just data. <laughs> yeah. Like, I sunk a lot of time into some of those saved games, and now they're gone. And even though I wasn't playing the games anymore, that was... That was like it's like it's like somebody if somebody came into your house and stole the album of all your baby photos. <laughs> like you weren't gonna look at that album, but <laughs> damn, that hurts. That's yeah. personal, man. I think I've re I restarted Condemned to like three times because I had a bug where it would kill your it would delete your game save or whatever. Ooh. It was really easy to save over that game save. Like uh, starting the game a third time, I was like, I can't do this. I'm sure this game's great, but you fucked me. <laughs> I can't do it. Mine was even worse. I kept restarting the game Lost Odyssey, which is a very, very long JRPG. Yeah, I think I remember I'd that I'd get game. through the first disc, and then I'd move, or I'd lose the game, or we'd our Xbox would explode and we had to get a new one. Yeah, that happened a few times, I'm sure. Fucking Xboxes. I know the first chapter of that game by heart at this point. But I've never, I'm, I, I want to see the end. I'm just never going to get there. I feel like we could have a whole podcast based on just this. <laughs> on how many games we've lost. Or just hard... Like, PC gaming is a whole other nightmare. Like, all the times you've had to format your PC at the last minute. Oh, at the and, worst time, too. Because yeah. you never expect it. You're like... You, like, think, ah, oh, maybe I should back up. Nah, my computer's fine. And then the next day your computer catches fire. Yep. Or you think it's on the same cloud and it's totally not. I need to go buy an extra hard drive and back up my computer. <laughs> get it? Get an external. Um, so anyway, let's just move on to the main topic. Because it, I think we've covered Titanfall. And, yes. Um, I, I, actually, I will just say that I didn't have a problem with the 6v6 thing. and I think that's great. Yeah, I do too. Because like, I feel like most of the time in Call of Duty, when I'm dying, it's from getting shot in the shot in the back. 
six v six. I I can find five friends that want to play Titanfall. Yeah. And also, that's that's a reasonable number of people that you can get together at a LAN party. Mm-hmm. I I think that that's a great idea. That lets us form t- teams and small groups of friends that can play the game. It's honestly the only reason I even play League of Legends anymore is because I can play with people I know. And Splinter Cell was always four versus four, and it was amazing. So yeah. it's a good example. Um, but yes, main topic. We are discussing something we've already been discuss- discussing for about 20 minutes now. <laughs> multiplayer games! <laughs> but now it's official. Yeah, now, now yes. Now it's anything in this podcast is ever official. It just happens. It's like accidental pregnancy. Um, <laughs> that's delightful. <laughs> this is, well, yeah, at least the mistakes we make on this podcast are a little happier than just, oops, she's pregnant, uh oh. Um,. So, I want to go way back. I, the, as far back as I can go with multiplayer games is probably stuff like Balloon Fight on the Nintendo. Old school. Yes. How far back can you go? To games I actually played? Yes, like fond multiplayer memories. Fond multiplayer memories. Wow, you're narrowing it down. Or, or at least something you can talk about violence ensuing over video games. Super Mario Brothers 3. I don't remember ever engaging in the multiplayer in that game. I played it a lot, but never really... I I remember, because my younger brother, <laughs> every time I tried to move past his space, would fire that up and try to steal my turn from me. <laughs> the dick. <laughs> I don't think we ever f- even tried. I don't think we even knew it was two players back then. Like, um, I actually... I really like that little mini-game. I think it's fun. I... I've actually played a version of it that's just that. Hmm. And it's a cool little two-player thing that you can do in your free time. Um, I don't think it belongs in Super Mario Bros. 3. No. it's and, and a lot of games have done shit like it. Like, I think Grand Theft Auto... Was it Grand Theft Auto 3? Or uh, San Andreas had some weird thing where you had to, like, drive to a spot on the map to participate in some weird multiplayer mode. So games have done shit like that. Yeah. Decades ahead of that of them, um, or after them, I should say. Uh, but yeah, I from their example. Hmm. No one learned from their example. No, no, they didn't. Um, I actually didn't play combat when it happened. I actually played it for the first time just like six months ago with a friend. Um, and combat is still awesome. You can curve the bullets. <laughs> Um, and I've I've always kind of wanted to play pong with another person. I mean, tennis games are still great. Like top spin is great, but you get those paddles, you know, on pong, and that that's got to be fun. I I have this problem with needing novelty in games, in anything. I guess I get bored with stuff, and I'll revisit things that I love. But pong is so simple that I could never really get too deep into it. Well, and Pong is probably something you just go to for brief sessions and then kind of say, okay. Yeah. I think I like it when a game has just one or two really, really strong mechanics, and then they're, they're so solid that um, it's easy to get into, but difficult to master. Um, yeah, that's that's fair. Kind of like a game like uh, uh, what was that new Samurai Samurai, Samurai Gun. Gun? Yeah, that game looks awesome, but only local multiplayer. So yeah, it's off my hard drive. <laughs> um, yeah, I loved Balloon Fight. That game, I think I played Balloon Fight more than any other Nintendo game, and I still think it's Nintendo's most underappreciated game they've ever released. <laughs> But it's like, how do you make a sequel to that? It's like all the sequels to Dig Dug that nobody cares about. Yeah, it, it's it's perfect already. Yeah. Now they don't need more levels. They've got enough levels. I think that game is really held back by the fact that Nintendo only produces, you know, they they produce their own hardware, and I would have to own a console to enjoy it, and you would have I to. It, I think it comes for free with the Wii now. Oh, does it? Or with the, the Wii U. The Wii U. Or? The Wii U. Okay. I still won't buy a Wii U, but... I'm holding out... Uh, the Wii U. 
has so much potential for amazing multiplayer games. Mm-hmm. Uh, a game where uh, this was I'm stealing this one from Penny Arcade. A game where the players who are on screen are playing as adventurers in a dungeon crawler hack and slash thing, and the person with the the pad is playing as their dungeon master. Oh, okay. Um, a game where the players on screen are starship pilots dogfighting an alien armada, and the player with the pad is in control of their capital ship. Okay, that sounds cool. Um, oh shit, I had another one. Oh, a game where the, the players on screen are trying to sneak their way through an abandoned city, and the player with the screen has a limited number of points to drop down turrets, traps, and monsters to try to stop them. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, it's, it's an active, stealth-based tower defense game. Speaking of Nintendo's... Uh, those exist. Did you hear about this Wii U um, sales forecast that they d- dramatically cut? No. So early, I don't remember how long ago it was, but uh, it was recent, where Nintendo says, Brr, we're going to sell 9 million Wii U's, and then very recently said... Uh, actually, it looks more like 2.8 million Wii U's. 9 million to 2.8 million! I need to check on that, because, like, I I remember the, the Wii U sold really well compared to... Oh, uh, well, actually, maybe not... Maybe it doesn't sold well, but they released earlier than the other consoles, and a lot of people bought it. I don't know. I know. I, I don't remember anyone ever... I'm not calling you wrong, but I don't think I've ever heard anyone say... Wii U sold really well ever. <laughs> and actually, uh, the 3DS see. is, I think, doing better than it has. Um, they just need to double down on one console. They need to stop. Nope, you, I'm, I'm checking it out. You are correct. You're reading that IGN one? Sold. Yeah, the Wii U has not sold very well at all. Yeah. It hasn't, and I think it's because it's just... <clears throat> I think at the beginning, it was doing... Okay, and but now that window is closed, and there's other consoles out. It's, yeah. it's exactly what we thought would happen. It's, Nintendo, the Wii sold amazingly well because the Wii was simple and had all these family games on it that were great for anybody that wanted to get their parents in mm-hmm. gaming or anything like that. It and sold to it people had, that didn't play games, which is everybody. Yeah. And and it, it has multiplayer stuff too. The Wii yeah. has great multiplayer stuff. The Wii U feels like they were just desperate to throw out some new kind of hardware that would give them a competitive edge, but they didn't bother to contact anybody about making really good games to play off that hardware. Yeah. Because there is so much you can do with that. Yeah. Oh my god, it's it's brilliant. It's an amazing idea. They just have zero follow-through. Well, I don't think there's enough consoles out there for developers to give a shit about making a game for it, because they can make a game on the cheap. Like, a lot of people talk shit about the Wii U's dated hardware, but consider um, how expensive it is to make a modern game. You know, like a big-budget modern game. It'd be much cheaper to make a game for the Wii, but even if they do, who's going to buy it? Yeah, because there are only 4.2 million consoles outside of Japan. (laughs) Yeah. So I, I really do think they need to pick one, a handheld or a home console, which will probably be the handheld and just stick to that. Which they're good at. I mean, they've got the 3DS. Mm-hmm. I think they're just segmenting their market too much. Uh, I, actually, I don't even think they're segmenting their market. I think they're trying for two different markets, and they did a great job with the 3DS, and they did a really half ass job with the Wii U. Well, the, the Wii U is just in my opinion, just seems like a weird obtuse version of the DS, where you've <laughs> pulled the, you've ripped the DS in half, and you're running around with both ends. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. I the Wii U has advantages over the DS. It's it's bigger, so they can put more processing power into that. They can have multiple. Oh well, uh, yeah. It's it's like they they can have, and so that lets them have multiple people playing on the same console. So only one person needs to actually own the th- the Wii U and the game, and then you can have four people playing in the same room, and that's like that's an advantage. Well, not an advantage, but that's that's something different than the 3DS. 3DS is what you play when 
you're on the bus by yourself, or when you're just out and about. Um, the Wii U is meant to be a, a home console, and I can see where they were going with it. I can see what they wanted to accomplish and why, because it's a good idea. They really, they they need some better games for it. Well, that new, people say that Zelda game is really good. Like, and a lot of people do not like the last few Zelda games. And I I can see why they think that. They're not wrong. It's just... I don't think games are going to save them at this point. I, I mean, unless they release a lot. Um, what they need is... Yeah, they need a lot of multiplayer options, because that's what the Wii U can offer. It can offer a different format of multiplayer. The PS4 and the X-Bone can... They have a ton of different games, but they're going to have basically the same styles of games. Yeah. The Wii U has the opportunity to create these games that are different than anything we've seen before, that have asymmetric multiplayer and really weird interactions between players, and that is so cool, and I just wish they'd get off their asses and do that. I think Nintendo is struggling right now in the same way a lot of Japanese video game companies are struggling and they they're just not innovating like they used to. People well, people in Japan, you have to understand, do not buy home consoles. Yeah, they're much bigger into handhelds. The, the DS sold like crazy in Japan. Yeah. The Wii U did not sell very well at all. It actually I think it sold better internationally because it, it Japan has the cities are tighter packed the houses or homes are smaller and nobody wants to spend space on a console. Well, it's also why arcades are a big thing in Japan. I think that... The, which I fucking wish we had arcades yeah, here in America. Yeah, I do too. And, uh, there's a, a bar in downtown Portland called Ground Control. Ground Control, and, yeah. yeah. I kind of don't care about playing the games, but I like just sitting there and drinking and listening to all the <laughs> sounds all around me. It's really euphoric. Um, I, playing arcade games. I just love being in an arcade, but the moment I start playing the games, I go. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> I, I I dig the idea of arcades because you can have all these different controllers and different ideas yeah. just all around you, and you can constantly see what's happening and what you could be playing, and you can hang out with other people that are there for the same reason. And yeah, get I, gamers I, out of their fucking homes. I'm like the opposite of you because I don't actually drink. So I show up at Ground Control to just to hang out and watch other people play games. I just played uh, I played those games growing up, so it's like thinking about them playing them now and then spending a lot of quarters on them. Like you already know what the games are and yeah. they're not worth the quarters to explore them. Yeah. But I like being there. I like yeah. the sounds and the excitement and being around, you know. But, I mean, a lot of these people that are in these arcades are are new to all of it. Yeah. And you get to see other people being excited at the new stuff. Mm -hmm. Which is quite possibly the best version of multiplayer. Why, arcades? Uh, no, introducing other people to a game. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of the last time I did that. <laughs> I've, I've experienced this, but it's been, I don't have a lot of uh, awesome putting in examples. Um, I uh, I sat down the other day with a friend of mine and got him to play Cataclysm, Dark Days Ahead, which is not multiplayer. But not World of Warcraft for the people no, at home. It, Dark Days Ahead is a roguelike about all of the apocalypses at once. Mm. Mostly zombies, but other stuff too. How's the gameplay on that? Is that like a three-quarters perspective kind of deal? or? It's uh, No, there's it's top-down ASCII graphics. Okay. So... If you can tolerate that, you can play this. Um, but yeah, sitting down and, and like watching him play and like just saying, like, how, "How do I pick stuff up?" This, okay, cool. And then seeing him wander around and break into abandoned houses and scavenge food, and, and then like I, and he gets into it, and I come back a few hours later and he's still playing. He's like, <laughs> "So what do you think?" I like it. It's a simulation of terrible things. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> That's a good way to describe a game. It feels so good to introduce somebody to a game and, and have them like it. And I think that's... If you can play with them, that's cool. But they don't need to be able to. 
Yeah, and I really miss couch co-op. Yes. Which brings us right back to our topic. Multiplayer games. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. In your opinion, best game with couch co-op. Oh, see, I need more experience with couch co-op. I mean, like I said, I really like GoldenEye. Um, a lot of old NES games had great couch co-op. Golden Axe. Mm, <clears throat> yeah. great. Um, Altered Beast was okay at home. Wasn't as good as the arcade. Rampage! Oh my god! Rampage, yes! I forgot! Where you could eat the other player, too. Yes! Uh, yes! Oh, the game started uh. so many fights in my household. Mm. I'm surprised that Nintendo didn't get thrown. Oh, Rampage. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I think my blood pressure is going up thinking about being eaten in that game. It's like, no! It's like you can see him coming at you and you're like pushing the button to get him to walk. You're pushing the button to get him to run faster. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Of course, you know, everyone's going to say Goldeneye and Goldeneye was great. I didn't play it much, but I played it enough. Huh? I didn't like Goldeneye. That had good competitive multiplayer. Did that have co-op? It did. It did? It did, yeah. Um, I believe so. I like the multiplayer in that game. Yeah, multiplayer was fun, but the controls were still ass. Yeah, that crazy controller. Um, I like... The fuck designed that controller? Nintendo. Like, you <laughs> sat down the other day and tried to design a worse controller than the <laughs> N64 controller. And you know, the only thing we could come up with? You know that the middle handle on the N64 mm-hmm. that has the joystick there? The thumbstick there, yeah. Yeah, the thumbstick. It's just four of those arranged in an X pattern. <laughs> And then it has an accelerometer, so depending on which way it's oriented, each joystick or each thumbstick is a different button. Why thumbsticks? Because fuck you. <laughs> Just to get even with Nintendo. Yes. <laughs> so so each one has so there like there's thirty two different buttons for each alignment, and there's four different alignments for a total of 128 potential buttons on this controller. Oh God. But there's only four thumbsticks, and that, those are the only things you interact with. You should go bring this to Gabe Newell and have him. And there's no it. indicator of which way is up. You have to <laughs> remember it and guess. And that is your punishment for having the N64 controller. <laughs> I hated the N64 controller, and, like, I mean, N64 had a handful of great games, but. Man. That, that was kind of the beginning of the end for Nintendo, in my opinion. You know what I found bizarre? But here's something to think about. Name a good RPG that you remember from the N64. I didn't really... Uh, I played N64 at like, my friend's houses, but I don't really... Can, can you even think of an RPG well, for the N64? I don't know if you could call it an RPG, but Zelda did have that style of exploration and dungeon crawling. It, it wasn't stat-based... But I guess you, Zelda's got, like Zelda's like an action RPG, an action adventure sort of thing. It's like if you took an action RPG but stripped out all the numbers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't think of one. <laughs> but all the all the RPGs are being made for the PlayStation. Yeah, which is another. I, 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 I wondered why that happened because up until then, Nintendo was where Final Fantasy went. Uh, Chrono Trigger, a lot of uh, Dragon Quest. It's kind of funny. But then the N64 came out, and all those games moved over to the PlayStation. It's kind of like the uh, PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. How the PlayStation 2 had all those games and Devil May Cry and all these exclusives. And then Which are now going over to the 360. <laughs> yeah, now they're all multi platform because they made that fucking console $600 and no one bought it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there was, uh, Goldeneye, people really like Perfect Dark, um, which is kind of like the sequel to Goldeneye, in a way. No. I mean, not story-wise, but it was made by <laughs> Rare, it was originally like going to be... a spiritual sequel? Yeah, it was supposed to be a Goldeneye game, I think, but huh. it never happened, they, they, they meant, ended up making it something else, but, um, wasn't there a Goldeneye 2? Or like another James Bond game that came out? For the 64, that sucked or something? The world is not enough, I think. Was that a 64 game? 
Yes. Wow. Eh. <laughs> I don't, who cares? <laughs> I actually like a lot of James Bond games that a lot of people don't like. I actually liked, um, what was it? Uh, I liked Quantum of Solace. I liked Bloodstone. Um, I love Everything or Nothing. That game is fantastic. Oh, that was fun. Yes. Like, I know people give that game a lot of crap for having bad controls and bad level design. But, but it was like the first game that, it was like the first thir- functional third person shooter where you could aim wherever you liked. Yeah, and it had some really cool, like, set piece moments in it, and it did set pieces well. Yeah, you're going down the side of the. Oh! The game was so good. And uh, the, the, the Sean also, Connery like, one was a really laser good. watch, I believe, and how can you say no to a laser watch? Those laser watches. I want a laser watch. Why don't we have one of those? I don't. Do you want to just go buy laser watches? <laughs> just tape, I'll duct tape a laser to the top <laughs> of, like, $5 McDonald's go, watch. Like, break into OSU, steal one of their chemical lasers. <laughs> just just get, get, like, a tiny digital watch and then have a backpack with 400 pounds of laser equipment attached to the digital watch. Wouldn't it be ironic if it was backwards and you didn't know it and you just, like, shot a hole right through your heart? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Hits the backpack and blows up in a big fireball. Uh. This is why I'm not allowed to have any kind of power or money. See, so I'd hurt somebody. <laughs> Sounds like you'd hurt yourself. <laughs> I, I know, right? Well, and everybody else around me when that thing blows up. Shoots lasers everywhere, like a laser frag grenade. That's not how... You, sure. Don't question my laser backpack! <laughs> <laughs> Get Neil Stevenson on the phone, he'll explain it. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like an eight-hour podcast. Please. No Get explanations him. from Neil Stevenson. <laughs> um, okay. okay, what more multiplayer games? Here's a question for you. Mm. Most disappointing weapon or piece of equipment from a multiplayer game? I don't know. <laughs> I've been so... I uh, had plasma pistol on Halo 1's pretty awful. I mean, you can yeah. use it, you can charge that fucker up and really kick some ass with it, but in Halo 1, man, you pick that thing up and someone's coming at you with the real pistol. Because that real pistol can two-shot people. Yeah. But the fact that there was health bars but, in that game... But not 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 the most, not the, like, weakest, yeah. just most disappointing. I don't remember. It's been so long. Because I can think of one off the top of my head. What? Also from Halo, from... I think it's it's from ODST and Reach, the Spartan laser. We had um, the Spartan. I actually like the Spartan laser because we would have. Well, I'm thinking of the Spartan laser. It's on Halo Two, which was fun to use. Yeah, I don't remember the Spartan it laser. Showed up on. once. Well, the, we the one from ODST and Reach. It takes like five seconds. You, you hold down the trigger for five seconds, and then it just fires a tiny little laser. Which will, to its credit, kill or explode. Oh, the Spartan laser, right. But... Splinter. Its charge-up time is insane. Yeah. You and you're using a controller. Your, you can't keep the crosshair centered on something that's moving for five seconds. Yeah. It's a tiny area of effect, and it's so understated. It's good for hitting vehicles. I think it's about its only use. Like, if there's a warthog running around on Valhalla, um, that's pretty fun. But it's like they made a lot of guns in, in Halo as if you're using a mouse. Yes. And Despite I th- the fact that... what Has Halo 2 even gotten to the PC yet? Halo, yeah, Halo 2 was on PC. Like, Okay. Pretty early on, I actually have it. Um, and I actually kind of want to... Every now and again, I think I need to install... <laughs> Funny Halo 2 story, okay. So, this is right after um, <clears throat> they released that Halo Anniversary Edition, so it was the first game you know, with the, the HD yes. graphics. And my brother really wanted me to get it, so I was really hesitant. So I got real drunk one night, and I'm, s- <laughs> I'm sitting there playing Halo 2, and my brother walks in the door. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm ten beers in. <laughs> I was like, look what I'm playing! <laughs> and he goes... Oh, you got it? Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm playing Halo 2. Why? I'm drunk. <laughs> this was just like last... I don't know, this is when that game came out, so it's only like a couple of years ago. So, yeah, I've done that before, gotten real drunk and said I want to experience Halo 2 again. 
and then wake up with the controller in my hand. So it's a good game. It's solid. It's got amazing multiplayer mechanics. Um, I I like SWAT. I'm in love with Halo Two. I I loved SWAT. I don't love the fact that that game was like if you had that submachine gun and nothing else, you wouldn't make it. Um. I think that's sort of the point. You're supposed to start with that and then go find something better. But you couldn't do anything with it. I mean, it just wasn't... Half the people would come up to you dual wielding or with a you know, a shotgun or something incredible, and you're trying to throw fucking grenades, and if you're lucky, those two grenades will kill them, but they bounce all over the fucking place. Um... I still liked it. I don't care. I I, I played the hell out of that game, so I'm not saying I didn't... I think I played that game more than any other game I own, like, in, in history. Um, yeah, it was good. I love playing SWAT. I love the soundtrack. I listen to the soundtrack, oh, yeah. the soundtrack all the time. Amazing. Mm-hmm. I think that's the so, biggest reason why I like playing it when I'm drunk. I just want to take in the, the atmosphere and the music. So, now that we've gone through all of multiplayer gaming's history, what... <laughs> Yes. What's like anything recent you've been playing that's multiplayer? Probably not. <laughs> um, because <laughs> I'll be honest, the only multiplayer stuff I really play anymore is Team Fortress Two and League of Legends. Yeah, I. And everything else I've been playing is like, I, I see games. I saw Rust on Steam the other day for sale, and I was like, yeah, no. I don't want to. I don't want to play with other people. That game seems like it's going to take a lot of time and commitment, and I'm an adult with a job, yeah. and I have to work around other people. You have people's... shit to do. Yeah, and dealing with schedules. You know, I have friends that work swing, and I work day, and it's just. It seems like I'd buy it and never play it. Um, or, or you buy it, start playing it, get killed by some asshole with a gun, and then just stop. Yeah, I get angry it's... and give up. I'm installed. Yeah. Um. Well, I, I guess, uh, I mean, the only multiplayer game that I can think of that I'm really still playing regularly is Killing Floor. Um, yeah. I mean, co-op games, you know, and, and Gears, Gears of War Horde mode, I'll play that every now and again. Co-op That's, is fun. It is, and I kind of... We I, need more good co-op. Yeah, well, now that a lot of games have Horde modes in them, like that Fear 3 had a, had a really good Horde mode. I... I don't agree with every game adding a horde mode. I think it's kind of a cheap way to just yeah. try to add value to it. Some games are not suited for horde mode. Yeah, I agree. Gears of War totally is. Mm-hmm. They, In fact, they probably have the best. One of the best, yes. Mm-hmm. Killing Floor probably is the best. Just because it is horde mode designed to be horde mode, and man, that's cool. I, I think um, Gears of War... 3 horde mode would be better if they had... So they got, like, the 50-wave horde mode. I kind of yeah. wish they had, like, a 10 or 25-wave horde mode. So Something I, where you can actually win. Yeah, yeah, and everyone fucking leaves. It's like, I wouldn't mind wouldn't getting... die and leave? Yeah, well, it's... It, yeah. You, people don't join after the game has started, so you oh. start with four people, and people leave, so you're down to, like, two, and then you just can't do anything. So it, it literally kills the game. Um... So if if like people could still join in after the fact, and if I was playing with friends, and even if we got the wave three and gave up, I'd be totally fine with that. I don't mind giving up. It's, I, I, it, was, I think I played Horde mode in Gears of War two, just split screen. I tried, and, and then you learned and the two people. Two person mode. Horde mode, and we got pretty damn good at that sort of thing. Yeah, you get good when you're playing with two people because you, <laughs> you don't you <laughs> die. Because you have to get good. Yeah. Um, three was really good. Three took everything from two and just made it ten times better. The only gripe I had about three was that there's a lot of grindy stuff in there. It's like, ah, we'll do this, and you can have the better version of the turret. Oh, was, I hate that. Yeah, it's just dumb. Like, I, I, I kind of like where everything is unlocked from the start, and I just have to learn to deal with it. I kind of like a bit of grinding. Like, I kind of like the level of Call of Duty where it's like, I now have this new attachment, and it's really exciting. But when it just takes fucking forever. And I don't have time. Um, that, that is actually one thing I don't like about Killing Floor. Um, is the the level up thing for the perks. Yeah, it takes forever. You know what actually would be a kind of cool version of that they could do in Killing Floor 2? Hmm. Is if instead of 
do four bajillion damage with shotguns to get to the next level. It was like it they tied it into the achievements. Mm-hmm. So to get to level two with the shotgun perk, you have to like you have to kill three enemies with the same shot. Not that hard to do. You just gotta line yeah. up some specimens. Yeah, you do that with that arrow. You just Yeah. And well you gotta do it with a shotgun to mm, Yeah, that uh, is pretty easy, yeah. especially when and you then, and then, like, to, from, to get from level 2 to 3, you have to, like, keep a door welded shut for a minute. And then also kill eight dudes with one shotgun blast. Uh, so, you know, now you're now it's making you put some effort in. You know, I'm not a huge Call of Duty advocate, but I don't see anything unacceptable about, unac- unacceptable about just completely ripping them off <laughs> and using that class system and getting, you know... I wouldn't want it as long-winded as them, but it'd be less long-winded than... It's not a bad idea. Yeah. uh, I mean, hell, if we want to keep talking about multiplayer games, let's talk about the first time we experienced Call of Duty 4. What a mind-blowing moment that was. For me, at least. I I never played Call of Duty 4. Ow! It was amazing. Which one is that? Is that the first Modern Warfare? Modern Warfare, Warfare, yeah. I played... Okay, I played Modern Warfare 1 and 2. Played the single-player... And never once felt the need to go online. What? Why would you play the single player? <laughs> I play the single, single player. player. Single player in Modern Warfare One is actually a really good game. Mm. The single player in Modern Warfare Two is not. I didn't care much for the single the player. Multiplayer in, in both of them was filled with assholes. Yeah. Well, I mean, that Infinity Ward's games are marketed towards exploitative individuals. That will say, if I sit in this corner and shoot people in the back, it's less challenging than actually getting out and fighting people for real. Or, um, now if you go play old games like the first Modern Warfare, everyone's like running around under the map and all this shit, and they refuse to patch it out. Um, no, I, I remember the first time I played that game online, it was that progressive online stuff where you're unlocking uh, new attachments and everything. Believe it or not, since someone else had done it quite like them, it was pretty damn Im- impressive what they did. Um, and, yeah, I like and the idea of it. And I didn't feel really passionate about another Call of Duty game until um, Black Ops came out, and that game was fucking awesome. The mo- I love the... Um, in Black Ops, they started the contracts thing, where it was like... Oh, it, you could take a contract for a certain amount of points, and if you succeeded, they'd give you a bunch more. So... Uh, but it was a big risk reward thing because if you lost, you were just out those points. But if you did it, it was really exciting, especially if you're right down on if you're looking at the timer and you get that last kill, right as that timer's about to run out. Um, and they were really that, that's actually a really cool idea. Yeah, and do you know what they did with Black Ops Two? Took that out. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's the Call of Duty grab bag method. They have a brown <laughs> bag with pieces of paper in it. They're like, hey, here's a bunch of features. Let's just pull randomly. Well, this feature was really successful last time. Why don't we do that again? No! You're fired! We must obey the grab bag. (laughs) They have a golden grab bag altar. (laughs) There's like candles and human skulls. (laughs) Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, fucking... And I still enjoy... Players show up at the altar of the grab bag. (laughs) Slips of paper with racial slurs written on them. (laughs) Yes. Oh, man, I've been called the N-word so many times playing Call of Duty, and I'm like, dude, first of all, racism ain't cool. Second of all, I, I, do I sound like a black guy? Like, what's what's your motive here? Like, what? Oh, God. It, I, so I just stopped plugging in my headset after a while, because... Yeah, it's not... Idiots. Perfect. No, it's not. And, and, yeah, the only thing is they just need a mute permanently feature on Xbox Live. Just hit that button in the dashboard or on any game and never have to worry about fucking going in. It's not even... It's not like it's just Call of Duty either. No. I I made the mistake... I I play League of Legends. I kind of like the game. It's it's really fun to play with friends. I made the mistake of playing alone the other day, Mm -mm. and I fucked up. And I, I... I apologized for fucking up, and boy howdy was that the wrong thing to do. Because everybody on my team jumped on my apology and started calling me a retard. It's like, you know what? 
I was going to try harder and try to make up for my mistake. Now, fuck all of you. I'm <laughs> quitting. <laughs> like, I don't care. I will take, I'll take the six hour ban for leaving a game. Yeah. I don't want to play with you fuckers. Yeah, and you're probably not in the mood to play for the rest of the night anyway. Yeah. So I have better things to do than just be abused for apologizing. Yeah, and and unfortunately there are some games where most of the people that you're playing with, the biggest thing they got going on in their life is that game. Yeah, and League of Legends has just the most toxic community out of any game I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It's If you can pick some vile trait of humanity, you can find it there. (laughs) Racism, sexism, homophobia, homophobism... No, that's when you fuck up words. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah, I never played it. So, I've heard about it. They talk a lot about it on Giant Bomb. Yeah, yeah now, now that I've said that the community is the worst thing ever, if anybody out there wants to play, <laughs> I totally recommend you do so. It's a really fun game if you can play with some friends, and I'd be happy to help anybody learn the game, because, like I said, introducing people to games is fun. I it's just you know you gotta you gotta get the right people to play with and there's just probably like seventy percent assholes. I think the only games that I've ever actually enjoyed talking to strangers with were Tom Clancy games. For some reason, they just bring in more intelligent, kinder people. Yes, um, mostly because like, we're all like grown men. The was Ghost Recon a Tom Clancy game? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that, that was the first game I played on the Xbox. And are you talking about the first one for the original Xbox, or are you yes. talking about Gra? Oh, okay. And I, I'll be honest, I didn't get it for a while because I was yeah. young and dumb. And it was Tom but Clancy. The the more I played it, I was like, oh, I get it. I actually have to not. It's not a. It's not a first person shooter. It's a strategy game that yeah. happens to take place in first person. Mm-hmm. I can do this, and I I played that, and I played. Uh, I played land mode with people at a local game shop, and Back yeah, when that happened. Yeah, it, it's it was fun. Those people were nice. Yeah, I I miss playing lands with friends. We did a lot of that with Halo too, and actually getting together oh, with yeah. decent people. It was so oh. much fun to get like sixteen people linked up together. And then the moment where you're shouting and like throwing chips at somebody because they killed you, and they're like, "Ah, my... oh, it's great." And the one jackass gets the energy sword and just flies around oh. the map, murdering people. Do you remember the uh, sword glitch on uh, early on with Halo Two, where someone could lock on and then fly? Yes. Oh man, that it wasn't was... a, that wasn't a glitch. That was a feature. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so speaking of Tom Clancy, I think some of my m- most exciting multiplayer memories were specifically Tom Clancy games like Rainbow Six Vegas 1 and 2, and, and actually, fonder than that, Splinter Cell. Uh, I may have talked about Splinter Cell before, but that game took about a month for me to really get into, because <laughs> it was so hard, but... and It's got a... It doesn't have a learning curve. It has a learning wall. Yeah, yeah. You're right. It's just you will fucking die until you figure this out, and nobody's going to give you a, a, a moment to learn the game. It's just yeah. So I was the mercenary for about the first month I played it because I was too scared to be the spy, and actually most people wanted to be the spy, so I was okay with that. And then I kind of started to put on the training wheels and go in as a spy, and I started to get better and better. Um, and they never really succeeded at matching that kind of spy versus mercenaries mode from Pandora Tomorrow or Chaos Theory. I absolutely love asymmetrical gameplay. I've I've said this a dozen times so far today. I love it when the sides are unbalanced and the mechanics are different. Mm -hmm. I I want more games like that. Yeah, (coughs) and I I don't really know how it works with... um, uh, What's the new game called? Um, I... Whatever. The new new Splinter Cell game. I forgot what it's called. I have no idea. Hold on. (laughs) But I know that... um, Blacklist. Splinter Cell Blacklist. I know that uh, the spies, I think they have guns and stuff, so that's kind of weird. Does that defeat the purpose? Oh, whatever. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I want to play it, but they haven't had a real sale. Like every, the cheapest it's been is thirty bucks. Like, eh. you know what you might like if you like multiplayer games that treat new players like cannon fodder. <laughs> Tokyo. You ever seen that? Is this a Steam game? It's a mod, I think. I think it's a source mod. Okay. Uh, if you ever thought to yourself, man, I wish I could play out some of the uh, some of the action sequences from Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> Without That's all the nerd jargon. Tokyo is. Um, it's a it's a tactical team based first person shooter with a, a little bit of a cyberpunk element to it, where you die if you are shot. And, and no, yeah, there's it's just one bullet. And there's down. no respawns. Oh god. And games are like an hour long, so really try not to die at the start. <laughs> I don't know if I. I think I'm too old for this. I think the reason why I got into Splinter Cell was because I was like 15 at the time. And you had time to <laughs> time to squeeze my controller and god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> instead of saying I have to go to work now. So. You know, I, I couldn't, yeah. I, I still... I really recommend trying out Neo Tokyo for anybody who happens to be listening. Um, All five of them. Hey, that's... I've yeah, that's that. better than nothing. Uh, speaking of people listening to this podcast, I was looking at the map on Libsyn.com, which is the website that hosts my podcast, and sure. uh, we have a couple of people in UK and India, so hello to those of you outside the United States. But not to those of you inside the United no, States. No, damn you. Americans. <laughs> Even though I'm an American, um, but it's I'm a, huh? I'm not American. I'm from Oregon. Yeah, right. So that's kind of, there's actually a lot of truth to that. So we're kind of like our own country. Um, this is not. Oh, that's right. This is not the politics podcast. I'm not allowed to. Yeah, no, that's fine. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm right on board with you on that one. Um, what else? What what other fond multiplayer memories did I have? I I liked all the Halo games. I think Halo after Halo three, I really started playing less and less of them. Mostly because like you get older and you just don't have as many friends that are really passionate about spending a lot of time online. And I didn't have the time that I did when Halo two I, came out. I played firefight mode with ODST. Yeah. Because uh, that was the only mode you could play split screen, and so I just play myself and one of my friends when they were over at my apartment. I love firefight. It so goes horde mode. Yeah, it was. It's probably the the second best horde mode on a console oh, game. Oh, I don't know if you saw this. There's somebody out there who is making a mod for. They're they're trying to. Make a mod that's like a, a PC version of Shadow of the Colossus. That is multiplayer. I didn't know there was a PC version of Shadow of the Colossus. They're they're just they're trying to make it like Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, okay. That is multiplayer and a horde mode defense game. That sounds really cool. I'm pretty sure they just watched too much Attack on Titan <laughs> and then thought, yeah, this. But whatever. Because they're they're taking a lot of the mechanics from Shadow of the Colossus. Well, I love. I can't, remember, I can't for the life of me remember what it's called or where I saw it. This was like months ago, but I'm looking forward to that because that would be so cool. Like you and six friends scaling some giant mountain monster. And the moment when you lose someone, it's like no. <laughs> oh well, see you, Bob. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bob's dead. Keep going. <laughs> it's just like a mountain climbing movie, but with a giant monster instead. It's a mountain climbing movie where you stab things afterwards. <laughs> instead, instead of, of stabbing a flag, style. you're planting swords. Yes. That that sounds awesome. Hopefully it'll happen without... Because lawsuits or money ends up stopping people from doing I don't think they're specifically calling it Shadow of the Colossus. Um, no. It's just, it's inspired by it, and it draws a lot of the similar mechanics. And I don't... I, I honestly, I don't know how players will get around. I kind of hope they did just watch a lot of Attack on Titan. <laughs> that's what this is. Because it would be so cool to have the the maneuver gear from that in a game. I haven't seen Attack on Titan. You don't have to. It's not very good. 
Okay, <laughs> I, before anybody crucifies me for that statement, I didn't like it that much. Well, is it one of those movies that has a lot of good concepts, but just it, it's a it's a show that has a lot of good concepts. It's, okay. Um, what if what if there? It, it's a zombie. Basically, it's a zombie anime, hmm. but zombies are thirty feet tall. Okay. Shadow yeah. of the Zombie. Uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> uh, and, and the way that humanity tries to fight back is their their soldiers have this. 3D maneuver gear, which is harpoon lines on their belt that they can use to latch onto buildings or trees or whatever, and uh, Spider-Man their way around, I guess. That sounds pretty fun. And, and it, yeah, it looks amazing. I'd love to play that in a game. They could steal, they could mix, like, Spider-Man 2 and Shadow of the Colossus mechanics. It's everyone's favorite Spider-Man game. Spider-Man the old good Spider-Man game. Well, those Sega Genesis beat 'em ups were really good too. I I actually played so much of uh, what was it, Maximum Carnage or whatever, that old Sega Spider-Man game. I can't remember. And then there was one that came shortly after it. That was uh, that was pretty good. But uh, I don't remember. <laughs> we we have we have the best memory. We're we're good journalists here. <laughs> Yeah, and I didn't even smoke any weed. Imagine if I had. Because <laughs> video games and smoking weed, you know. Yeah. We should do a show where you're stoned and I try to convince you that things existed that never did. Uh, this see, is my the, hobby. This, this, is, is, this is what I do with well, my stone friends. If you're asking me to do a, a, a podcast drinking a whole lot, then usually it's how it works, but I can drink more and then we will we will have a podcast where I'm just sloshed. And then try to get through before the hangover shows up. Because uh, <laughs> my problem with alcohol is I'll drink a whole bunch of it, and then the hangover will show up like before the night's over, and then it's gone by the morning. <laughs> that sounds awful. I, I think it's just. Convenient. I'm not sure which. I, <laughs> I ask myself that all the time. Well, it, I think it's just because I metabolize it so quickly. That's that's like that's a character creation perk. <laughs> I'm an X man. I, yeah, I think that is a mutant superpower. That's something that you marked down, like, okay, I can take two points off of dexterity and two points off of charisma, and then in exchange I get no hangover next morning. And in, in a 24 case of Bud Light Lime. <laughs> <laughs> Starting equipment. Three semi-trucks full of beer. <laughs> I, uh... Yeah, that was my drink on New Year's was Bud Light Lime, and it's uh, it's not quality beer, but it was affordable, so I was like, okay. Um, I, th- I should have a I could have a whole podcast where I talk about beer, um, but I won't. We're in Portland. Odds are good there is a podcast where they talk about beer. Uh, yeah, it's it's a curse and a blessing because people that say women are more indecisive than men clearly have not seen me standing in front of the beer aisle. I just kind of stand there and go, oh, I don't know. Uh. So, it's usually like a pyramid or a shoot or something like that because it's awesome and cheap. So, and if I'm dirt poor, I'll get like something shitty like Rainier or whatever. It's garbage like that. Um. So, video it's games. Nothing to me. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, just think of like, PBR. You know, you don't have to drink to even know what PBR is. Everyone I'm knows aware it exists. Yeah. I'm aware its name is ironic. I think it's all the same company. It all tastes the same. Just go with whatever's cheapest. Um, so, so is there any multiplayer coming out that you're looking forward to? Getting back to the video game thing and off, getting you off of beer? <laughs> <laughs> Never get me off of beer. Um, <laughs> you know, the multiplayer ship has, for the most part sailed for me. I, I think I'm more interested in co-op stuff because I'm just not competitive anymore. I wish I had played more Uncharted multiplayer because while the, the combat is not great, the, the, the maps were so amazing in that game. Like, There's a map where you're like, you get onto trains and you're, 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 you're paralleling each other on these trains and you're trying to shoot each other across the gap on these moving trains and you can like, I think you can even climb on top and so it's all this stuff, so I wish more games did stuff like that, were really big. Like, where the multiplayer levels were themselves big set-piece moments. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would be really cool. And Naughty Dog is great at doing that. Um, 
But yeah, looking forward to. I mean, Killing Floor Two, which is co-op. I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Like, I can't wait. Okay, okay. How about how about this then? If you if you could have a multiplayer game that was spawned from your hopes and dreams and also maybe some pixie dust, what would it look like? Hmm. You know, I'm not and, and I'm not good at making anything, um, but. I think it would probably be not that much more innovative than we currently have, but I would like to have a horde mode game that also has a lot of uh, emplacements, because most of these horde mode games, they don't have a lot of turrets. Like, Gears of War kind of does that. And I like turrets. I love setting up turrets and defenses and and stuff to just kind of uh, funnel the the enemies. So something that also is like... Defense. Maybe like a horde mode game where there's resources on the map, like turrets and and I've razor got a wire. Farmize Tiberium. You, you can run out and collect, and then you're trying to create little fortifications and shore them up between waves, I think and then this... have them torn down and have to escape or whatever. So I bet somebody that plays a lot of Minecraft has heard this, and they're just going to ninety yes, percent of that Minecraft, work is already done. This. Yeah. <laughs> It's just going to make a mod. It's just 10% of what we said. said Minecraft! Because, we forgot Minecraft! Uh, I've never played Minecraft. Really? I I don't like building stuff. No. I think it'd be fun if I was playing with other people and all the work was done. I was like, ah, ah, blow your <laughs> shit up! Um, We've had this conversation before. This is why you're not allowed on my Minecraft server. <laughs> you come back and your castle's on fire. <laughs> Running away. It's on fire. That castle was made of rock. What the fuck did you do? <laughs> I used all my whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. What am I looking forward to? I can't think of much of anything. Mostly because I think... Who pays attention to video game announcements? Oh, hey! I can think of I, one. I, um, I the Division. That the new game? Tom Clancy game. Ah. Uh, yeah, it looks so good. And apparently it's supposed to get a PC release, which is great because it's just another reason why I don't need another console. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if you've seen gameplay for that, but it just looks incredible. Um, it's actually could be the first example of like an open world shooter that also doesn't play like a bunk ass RPG. Hmm. Um, they had it. Uh, they were demoing it. I think at E3 about uh, last year or something like that <clears throat> when they were showing all the new stuff. And, like the bullets are going through the glass, and it just looks so realistic. <laughs> um, Gotta be careful with those, though. Like, you don't know how much they've pre-rendered for that demo. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you could have an Aliens col- Colonial Marines situation. Ah. Yeah, I didn't play it, but everyone else said, don't. Don't play it. I tried to play it. I heard it was bad. I glitched through the floor in the first level. <laughs> That's a good sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything you're looking forward to? Honestly, Titanfall... Um, I don't even know if my computer will run it, but I will upgrade for that because mm-hmm. I. It looks like okay, the Titans in that game look like this amazing blend of American and Japanese mechs. Yeah, and I've never really gotten on board with the Japanese style of armored robots. Um, because it's so done. Gu- Gundam was kind of dumb, honestly. I like the storytelling in Gundam, though. Well, I like uh, 0083 a lot. Yeah. Uh, I just just didn't get... I didn't get into Japanese mechs. I loved Mech Warrior, though, and I I liked American mech games, where they're more like tanks that have... Engineers. It's like an engineers game, where you have to turn the torso. Yeah, and then... But the one thing that I always loved about the Japanese mech games, uh, the Armored Core series... Mm -hmm is the booster jets on your mech. Especially in Armored Core 4. You can fucking move, and it feels so good. And there's melee combat in there, too. And Titanfall looks like this beautiful blend of these rugged-looking Pacific Rim-style things that are, you know, are heavily armed. One of them has a machine gun that shoots rockets. (laughs) Okay. Like, come on. (laughs) <laughs> what more do you want? Pacific Rim well, always reminded me of Big O. Yes. Yes. Big O is great. And, and, it's, and it's got that, and it also has that kind of thing from Big O, where you can rocket punch other robots. Yeah, you, your there punch is, is not enough, you got rockets pushing it There ahead. is melee combat. You can, like, precision rip off other mech's limbs. <clears throat> and 
it's I and yeah and I just I get such a kick out of seeing the videos for this and not just that but the the foot they didn't just say okay let's make a mediocre shooter that happens to have mechs they also went through the trouble of putting wall running and jetpacks in for when you're <laughs> on foot and ah. Uh, Everything in that game makes me feel happy on the inside. <laughs> you know, I think the only reason why I'd be glad to see microtransactions show up is if I could buy a Shinobi scarf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, that's the sort of thing that I would think would be perfect for Titanfall. That doesn't affect the gameplay, it just makes... Yeah. yeah, in the same way League of Legends does this. You can buy skins for the various champions. It's just cosmetic... The game is exactly the same. In Titanfall, I think that would be great. Pimp out your Just, own mech. Yeah. Yeah. Or or have it be like for a dollar you can replace the corporate emblem with your own logo. <laughs> you put it. I yeah. do that. Put a Valve logo on my mech. <laughs> <laughs> then Gabe Newell's face. Um. <laughs> It would be funny to be able to put your own face on your own mech. <laughs> it would always be Gabe Newell. You know, it would be a hundred Gabe Newells running around. I'd, I'd like to get the the little uh, the lambda symbol with a three next to it. Ha <laughs> ha, just to and make then, everyone go, what? And then every time, just come charging down, you know, charging down a street. Half-Life 3 is coming out! <laughs> and or start out the, internet. the street and start firing. <laughs> Everybody's like turning over buses and shit. <laughs> it's just like when a, when a baseball team wins or whatever. Like, let's destroy our city because we're so excited. Like, Welcome to Ohio. Yeah, right. Oh, Half Life needs Half Life Three needs to happen, and I don't know why I'm still not over the fact that I should be over it. I should just be like, whatever. It's probably never gonna happen. I I feel like at this point I've given up. Yeah, I, I I don't care if it happens or not. I am kind of over it. When it comes out, I'll totally play it. Mm -hmm. I'm just not excited anymore. So they're gonna have to really bring their A game to make me care. I I think we could have a. Uh, I think one of these days we need to have a Half Life podcast. Sure. And just save this conversation for that. But I will I will say Half Life One is, in my opinion, better than two. I think so. I think it was better designed for its time. Yeah, and two... I, I think if you look at them objectively, Half-Life 2 has some weird storytelling conventions, but cooler gameplay. Half-Life 1 isn't as smooth, but tells its story a bit better. I like and the level design in 1 a lot, too. Yeah. It feels like an adventure. You know, it was, it, Yeah. 2 does not feel like quite the adventure. The only thing that felt like... The only thing that made me feel anything in 2 was Ravenholm. Yeah. Which made me feel a sense of apprehension and dread. Yeah. I do not like horror games. I love I, I love horror games and I think that's why Ravenholm was potentially the best part. And Father Gregory is the best character in that game, easily, yeah. in my opinion. I went and downloaded the other day uh, SCP Containment Breach. I don't know what that is. It's a it's a horror game based off the SCP Foundation. And because I, I love the SCP stuff. It's it's the surreal seen through the lens of bureaucracy and after-action reports and containment protocols. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's mostly just, like, short horror writing. And I start playing the game, and I get about three minutes in, and I'm just like, you know what? I recognize a lot of the cool stuff in here. I recognize a lot of these uh, SCP entries. I'm not playing this. <laughs> I can't do this. It's dark. <laughs> it's creepy shit. I'm too scared. I, like, the game has... a the the primary enemy in the game that's hunting you around the facility is the statue that only moves when no one's looking at it. Mm, like the ghost in Mario. Yes, and it's a first person shooter where you have a blink meter. <laughs> okay. And I just like three minutes in. It's just no, done. I'm out. I quit. <laughs> Wasn't that like? Isn't there like some new game coming out where like one person's the ghost? And <clears throat> yeah, there's some new multiplayer game where one person's the ghost and everybody else is like trying to get through the house without getting killed or something like that. It sounds really innovative. Um, I think it's an indie game, but it might be on Steam Greenlight. Greenlight. I should probably look into that um, and uh, see see what the hell that's called so I can bring it up next time because 
right now, I'm not going to bother. Because for now, I'm running out of time, so... Yeah, and I have to pee, so... <laughs> Internet knows. Ah, yes, the, the logical end of all of our podcasts. Eh, end. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> so, uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up. Uh, please share the video Gabecast with anybody you know, anybody that might be interested in play, uh, listening to something about video games. If you games. like it, tell your friends. Yes. If you hate it, tell your enemies. Yes, right? Are um, different? Tell people you don't know. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter, Gabe0083, YouTube.com, slash Gabe0083. Um, I'm, I'm still looking for guests. Hopefully people that won't say, Yeah, I want to do it! And then just stop talking forever. Uh, I've been here twice. Uh, I'm, I'm a good guest. I'll keep coming back. You, you will... See, you're lucky because this is like... I you know beggars can't be choosers so oh, it's yeah. like when, even if you were a horrible guest I'd be like eh, I need to record a podcast no one else is coming I choose to interpret that as thank you Argus you're the best <laughs> guest I never say thank you those words I, never come <laughs> I I truly value and appreciate your time and your words <laughs> they are like honey for my ears and I don't know what I'd do without you that that's what I'm hearing in my head I don't know if I could uh ever tell a dude that anything about him is like honey, but <laughs> but thank you anyway. See, see, now you're overthinking it. You made it weird. I am overthinking. I th overthink everything. That's what makes me so crazy. Anyway, finish your wrap-up. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, you can find these these uh, podcasts uploaded on, onto my YouTube, uh, Gabe0083. I, I and kind of using Windows Movie Maker because I lost my video editing software when I formatted. So that's a lot of fun. So the moral for the week is back up your shit. Yeah, I was uh, I obtained uh, Sony Vegas from a not so legitimate source, <laughs> but fuck you, Sony Vegas. I'm not spending hundreds of dollars on a piece of video editing software. I find it bizarre how much some software costs. I think it's just because there's no like, competition. If Photoshop just cost ten dollars, everybody would buy it and they'd make the same amount of money. Yep. Yeah, I don't. <coughs> I don't understand it. It's uh, anyway. That's a different podcast. Um. So thanks for listening, guys. Uh. Yeah, I guess that's all we got for this week. All right. <laughs> Later. Good talk.